see Diego here on your left, David Nunez on your right. Yeah, and I, I do stand by. I think this. I think this is about a 50-50 matchup. And so one thing to take note of here is the seeding, because Diego Diego going into the finals here, having battled uh, higher up in the bracket, getting to go first in the first game and potentially the third game if it goes that far, it could make a difference in this matchup. I think that's a really good point. Absolutely. Let's see how strong of openings both these players are going to have. Let's see how they're going to adjust their opening hands as well. That could, that could be pretty telling. See how many cards they want to throw back and get new ones. Yeah, watching players alter their hand is always so interesting. The choices that they make, what they choose to throw, and what they choose to keep. Um, you know, we've said before that it's it's a real art, and games can be won or lost in the uh, hand alteration phase here. Sometimes there's a temptation uh, to, and I've, I've mentioned this before, I'm going to mention it again, because it was something I had to learn very early on in Lurkana. There are times where you have a hand that's, that's fairly good, it is almost optimal, you have maybe one or two cards you'd like differently, and you're tempted to say, all right, uh, you know, I can make this hand just a little bit better. I can turn it from a good hand into a great hand, and you throw those cards away, and you draw into two uninkables, the worst possible card, and now all the cards you wanted to play, you have to ink, and it just becomes worse. So, you know, all of these players that are playing at this level are very, very good at this, but for new players, one of the first things you have to pick up is the best way to alter your hand in the first part of the game. Yeah, I think it's uh, a skill that gets overlooked quite a bit in this. I know that it's something I kind of struggle with sometimes uh, when I'm doing a lot of testing. I'll take pictures of my, I'll take, you know, take this out, I'll take the picture of my hand and, uh, you know, what I'm getting rid of. And then later I'll talk to my buddies that are much better and be like, hey, what would you do here in this matchup? You know, like, you know, that kind of stuff that helps out a lot. So, I hey, look, if you want to know what the opening hand looks like, we're going to get a good shot at it. Diablo doing that for us here. And it's going to have David showing off all the goodies here. <laughs> Diablo taking a peek. Uh, fun note on Cricky going into the inkwell there. One of the things that these Emerald Amber decks often struggle with is closing the game. There are not a ton of high lore characters in this deck, and so sometimes they can get control of the board with the Under the Seas, but then they struggle to really close out, especially without cards like Sleepy Salute with the Steel Sun decks run. So Cricky is a card that Diego runs for the end game there. I think it's the only three lore character in this deck. I'll have to double check. I think you're right, yeah. But now going into the inkwell, not available for the late game, but you know, in the early game, you're not going to be able to play him for many turns anyway. But a fun note here as far as the deck build goes. Yeah, uh, early uh, drops from both players here. We've got a queen on turn one, and that's a big threat here because we see the bigger queen with the shift line already in David's hand. Mm, that's true. That allows them to play uh, grab your sword if, if that's something he wants to do on turn two or um, a whole new world on turn two. But the queen by herself is a, is a threatening presence, a commanding presence uh, with her two lore. Um, we haven't seen David do this. Uh, I haven't seen David today. I've watched several of his games, and I haven't seen him do the... Uh, to the turn to shift yet. Um, he's often put the queen on first turn and chosen to wait to shift later on turn three, playing a Smee instead on turn uh, turn two. So we'll see if he chooses to pursue that line here. But I don't see any other... Well, I think the players are talking to the judge here for just a moment. Yes. It seems like something's going on. There we go. Okay. So it seems like there was just a small little... Let's make sure we get everything ready here. Maybe the one of the cameras got moved. Yeah, a little slight earthquake right there. Yeah. Just for a second. I mean, when you're in this finals match, if there's any doubt about anything at all, it's worth talking to a judge and making sure that you're confident in the state of the game and where things are going. Uh, another really great play for Diego here. That is an Ursula Deceiver, and there's three good options uh, over on David's side. Anything really sticking out to you that you might want to take over one of the other ones? I mean, in the early game, the Let the Storm Rage On is always a card that I'm looking at. It does some early, it's early removal, allows your opponent to draw a card. Getting a Grab Your Sword here out of the hand, though, definitely, I mean, not a terrible option. Um, sometimes you might be tempted to grab that inkable card as well there. Um, there's one of those spells, uh, Strength of Raging Fire, which was inkable, everything else uninkable, but here, uh, the Grab Your Sword gone, and there we see Let the Storm Rage On uh, at work. Yeah, the queen coming down on the shift line that you were talking about, putting quite a commanding presence on the board, and then it's going to allow them to sing right away and draw a card here for David. And then we got an aerial spectacular singer here for Diego. Let's see if he finds a song. Uh, the, the games I've watched of Diego earlier, he's been uh, he's been whiffing a little bit with these aerials. So hopefully for him, with it taking this long, he might have choices. Actually, Looks like, oh yeah, I think I see. We don't talk about Bruno already. Mm -hmm. The hand there. And that's what we'll keep. Might have been the only option. Uh, we don't know. Uh, a lot of long staring there. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're you're trying to not let your opponent know that you don't have many options. Uh, but yeah, so interesting here. Let the Stormy John, I want to mention, is a, is a very popular card. Very good card to play on turn two. Oftentimes you see it with the Cinderella on turn one, but here the queen's shifting to play it. Um, replacing itself in your hand, getting rid of an uninkable, and then removing one of your opponent's characters is always great. And critically, removing that Diablo. And the reason that's so important is because Under the Sea is a sing-together card uh, that can 
pair, you can pair the Diablo, which would cost three, with a five singer of Ariel in order to sing that song in the early game. And so having that Diablo shift on the board rep and with the Ariel represents um, an eight cost immediately singing uh, under the sea. An immensely powerful turn here from Davisville. Ariel picking up a whole new world and then allowing the queen to sing Along came Zeus here, and you're seeing the queen really, really get a lot of work at the fact that that's such a high cost, which got it in on turn two. The muses set up here for Diego as well, and it looks like that's going to get taken out. I'm sorry, the deceiver is going to get taken out by strength of a raging fire. The strength of a raging fire. I couldn't help myself. That's no, all good. <laughs> and then it looks like we're going to sing a whole new world with the queen here as well. David playing at a very brisk pace. I can really appreciate this. Yeah, building up a decent board state. He's got some singers on the board, got some characters to stick. Uh, of course, the muse is there, is, is, uh, can bounce anything back to your opponent's hand with strength two or less. Um, the only target there being Ariel Spectacular Singer and now the Cinderella. But you don't like to bounce the Spectacular Singer when she has an enter play ability, which yeah, allows you to look for a song. You definitely want to avoid that one. That's a, lot, that's a last uh, ditch effort kind of thing, trying to maybe keep them from being able to sing five or to quest as well. But we have seen players do that with their own aerials in, in some spots uh, something that diego can can do in his own deck here let's see what does he have here with all these fresh new seven cards yeah what's it going to start with the diablo let me see what you got what'd you get with that uh whole new world so we're gonna we have the another shift we have another spectacular singer a couple songs not a terrible hand and of course the grab your sword which diego got rid of earlier is now represented in the hand again Yep, lots of powerful, powerful cards and characters and songs here. And don't forget that Queen is still in play, that Ariel's still in play, multiple sing fives here. And two muses David. now. So any song being sung will allow Diego to bounce two cards uh, with strength two or less back to David's hand. And we also know in this deck there's plenty of uh, songs and, and other cards and characters which can manipulate uh, David's character strengths. And so um, with a couple key cards here, Diego is able to return more than just the Ariel and, and Cinderella back. But one of the keys to this matchup is Diego being able to hit one of the under the seas, perhaps paired with another card, able to clear out his opponent's board. That's a combination that he's going to be working towards, perhaps with Kida, um, and that's something David's going to be eager to avoid. All right, so we're going to start off here with playing a queen from hand, so paying full retail for this one. Uh, second, we're going to use the aerial singer five to use grab your swords. Then it looks like we're going to... Quest up for quite a bit of lore here, up to five, and pass over to Diego. So Diego didn't lose any characters here this turn, but tons of damage left over on all of them. I was supposed to say, yeah, the Diablo. Yeah, he, does, was say, he, does lose, he does he lose the, the Diablo. Diablo. I was looking at that. I was too. I was like, wait, Diablo won three? I'm yeah, like, I had to look it up real quick. I was yeah. just to make sure. I was like, that doesn't seem right. Yeah, you and I both <laughs> gave each other a look at the booth. Like, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> but there we have. The Muse is left with two damage each. So again, it, one of these things about this deck, Under the Sea means that you're never really out of it when you have an opponent's deck that's character-based trying to close out the game. Um, with a little more ink, we can get the combo on the board. Um, but David definitely is applying a lot of pressure here. Let's see. Diego has some possible songs that could affect this board. and Maybe you can start to bounce some of these characters back to him because he's starting to fall pretty far behind. And I know you don't love having to bounce an aerial, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do when you're this far behind on the board. Also, I mean, if you start to challenge stuff, that's not bad, but David's got a queen, a second copy of the queen ready to go, and if you want to start getting into a challenge war, that card makes it really difficult to win those. Mm, definitely. It manipulates your strength, your, your character strength, and one of your opponent's character strength, and uh, definitely allows you to make really, really efficient trades. Uh, different options here. Taking a look at what we have. You know, one note: this this is you know Diego's deck is built around discard and applying discard pressure to your opponent's hand. And so far, the only discard we've seen is with that Ursula in the early game. I think. Although here comes number two with the Bare Necessities. He's going to be able to take a non-character uh, card from David. We see two options here. Yeah, it's an interesting choice here. One of those Strength of Raging Fire is clearly better as far as damage goes, and it is inkable. The other one gives David a song in his hand uh, when he plays it, which is Let the Storm Rage On. Um, here, though, we're choosing the inkable Strength of Raging Fire. And he is going to bounce the Cinderella back to hand here, too, because of the, because of the song being played. And uh, probably smartly not bouncing the aerial back. And then, you know what, look, hey, let's, let's get two more of these cards out of your hand. Here we go, some more discard pressure. You have forgotten me, a card from set one making an appearance here, forcing David to discard two cards, and then back over to David. All right, Ariel for David here is going to take a look at the top four, see if you can find a song. The fourth card was, in fact, a whole new world, and that's a pretty good one. David with two sing five 
uh, characters in play. So he's going to go ahead and get Lawrence out of his hand, and then that last card's going to get sung by Ariel. So here we go, a whole new seven for each player. Golly, and, and this is what Steel Song does so well. I mean, it plays the whole new world, and look at the number of cards available to sing if that's what David wants to do. We're not going to, though. It looks like we're going to quest for six. Yeah, it's going to put him up to 11 here. Smee's going to take an extra damage here, and this is an 11 to zero lead and a huge board here as well. you got to be wondering, is Diego going get, to get out of this? But he does have some reset buttons, possibly. He does. Does he have it in his hand? That's kind of so tricky. Yeah, I'm looking for the under the sea. I don't see it. We have the two muses, which could sing it. And then I think we have the Kida as well in hand. So uh, Kida, of course, when it comes into play, uh, takes makes all characters lose three, three strength until the start of your next turn. That includes your own. But in this case, it's a good combo with under the sea. So that's something that Diego is desperately hoping to find here. All right, Prince John is going to start off the turn. It's going to be followed by a Ursula Deceiver, which is going to take a look at D David's hand. It's going to get the last card was a Long Came Zeus. So that's going to get discarded. And that's going to get another card for Diego here. Kind of maybe, do you think he's just digging for that under the sea? At I this think point? he is digging for the end of the sea. He has the singers. He has the Kita. He needs that last that last piece. Yeah, he's not going to have many more turns left. David's probably knowing that he's, he, you know, he's... His time is on uh, loan here. He's going to make sure that he gets this done with before that Under the Sea happens. Yeah, and, and you know, David's representing game on the board right now. Let's see. Be our guest. Looks like he's going to go ahead and bounce the aerial. Then we're going to have the muses get, I'm assuming, get, get a trade in here. Yep. Yep. Shmi have to do off, it. The, off the board. But critically, again, take a look at the number of uh, the cost of the characters we have on the board. We have eight's worth. We have nine's worth. But eight is enough to sing under the sea. So that line is still available. Yep. Back over to David here. No longer having exactly enough to finish the game off here just yet. It's true. A flute in hand would do it. But I don't think we have it. Or do we? Yeah, I think it does have a flute. Oh, okay. It looks like we have an aerial, though. It's going to take a look at the top That's four. True, I think we don't was... have. We have the flute. We didn't have the song. Yeah, no song found from aerial here. We do have World's Greatest Criminal Mind there. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, I think we do, actually. There we go. But so, we need... Oh, we don't need... So there's the flute, aerial. Okay. The thing is, he's going to have to... Yeah, I was going to say two, four, six. There's the quest. Seven. Okay. Two, four, six, seven. That puts him up to 18. There's 19, and... Yep, yep. just going to be one, one short. short. Yep. So back over. I think that was a, we don't talk about Bruno, so still no. And with David being up at 18, I don't even know if Under the Sea gets it done anymore since Diego's at zero. That means the flute, all he has to do is, you know, sing songs for the rest of the game. He's going to be able to get it done. Yeah. And you see that he has one, but I, th I, I think he's going to be able to find another one or a character uh, at that point. It, most of these Steel Song decks run around 18, 20 songs. I haven't looked at this deck in particular, but around a third of the deck is, is usual. And yeah, it looks like looks like we're scooping up. Yeah, I mean the flute is the flute makes the difference there. Um, even if the end of the sea is drawn, as you pointed out, um, you can clear the board. Except you can't clear, clear that flute. There's no answers for it, and that's going to be the game. Yep. So David up one nothing here in the finals, getting ever so close to that trophy and those bragging rights mm -hmm. as the DLC champion of Toronto. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, we said one of the one of the keys to victory in this game for the Ember for the Ember for the Ember player. Or will we be moving on to a game three? I don't know. But, I mean, it's a great point, though, that uh, having lost there on the play, um, now in order to win the finals, Diego's going to have to win on the draw at some point um, if it goes to a game three. Yeah, game one just so important in these matchups. Like, I, you know, no one wants to be down 0-1 anyway and have to do, like, the reverse sweep type thing. But, yeah, like you said, just having to win a game on the draws is a little bit harder. You know, it, it definitely puts you at a little bit of a disadvantage in these games. Yeah, so Diego, I'm, I'm looking at Diego's hand. He's got some of the cards that you want to have in the early game. We do have the Ursula, which we could play in turn two to pick an early song. Uh, we do have the, the Shift Diablo. I don't... Do we see the one-drop Diablo? I don't think so. Okay. So it looks like he's keeping it, though, just in case he does find one. I like that kind of... Let's, let's, let's try to get lucky. You know, Let's try to get the best draw, draws from our deck. Yeah, Diablo is a really interesting card in this matchup. On the one hand, you uh, have there's a lot of removal on the other side uh, that can deal with Diablo. It is evasive, but there's Strength of Raging Fire, there's Little Storm of John, there's all sorts of cards which can deal with your pesky little evasive bird. Uh, on the other hand, um, if you manage to get a Diablo to stick, a whole new world becomes. Uh, we saw a draw fourteen <laughs> in the round before this, and uh, it's it's. Yeah. 
it's an interesting spot. In fact, we saw, I, th I believe, Diego draw 14, and uh, we were talking about he might run out of cards in his deck yeah. at some point in time. There were so many extra draw steps going on with that, and, you know, we've seen that. I, you know, you got to do what you got to do. If you're losing and you have to play a whole new world, look, look, you draw 14, I just need seven. Mm -hmm. I, I need these cards really bad to try to find it. If you're trying to find, you know, a, uh, you know, grab your sword, you know, a Tinkerbell in some other matchups, like just, you know, any of the cards that you really, really need. Uh, looks like we've got a strong opener from David here as well, so Diego hopefully has a strong opener himself. Yeah, we don't have the Shift Queen, but we do have the turn one Cinderella or Queen, but then we have the turn two Smee, so definitely a good one, two, which allowed him to put more pressure on. Looks like Pain of the Roses Red is going to enter the Inkwell, allowing a Diablo on turn one for Diego. And let's take a look at this hand from David, and as you can see, lots of ones, twos, and then some songs to sing as well. Mm, and strength, oh man, definitely some songs to sing to do some board control there, but nothing to sing, there's no shift to sing that Let the Storm Rage On uh, on turn two. Um, so it'll be a little bit before we can get some removal online for David, although Diego knows that Diablo, if he shifts it, is no longer, is not safe. So it does look like we're going to get that turn one singer in place. Cinderella, singer three is going to be played here. Turn oh one. yeah, sorry, I should have mentioned that earlier. Good catch. So Cinderella now, yeah, great, great target. So if Diego does choose to shift Diablo here, which you don't see a lot uh, on turn two, mm -hmm. then that's available. But now, oh, a whole new world uh, oh, yeah, being that drawn was, into hand. That was the draw here. So Diego, in the spot, do you take the removal spell that you were looking at that you were a little worried about, or do you take the a whole new world, the really, really powerful card, but there's no way to sing it just yet because we, you know, we don't have a way to get the queen into play just yet. So uh, great play for Diego here on turn two. Lots of choices, though. It does look like Strength of a Raging Fire is going to go away. Yeah, it's an interesting choice. The, one of the key parts of this card is it's inkable. Um, and now we have a whole new world, which is uninkable, Strength of Raging Fire, oh. which is uninkable. So take away everything we just said. We have the Shift Diablo behind this. He was able to find it, and then it's able to yes. use the Diablo oh to goodness. sing Bare Necessity to take care of the other removal spell in David's hand here. What and an opening for Diego. There's a fantastic, fantastic opening. And now this card is online. We took care of both the removal spells. We do have whole new world in hand. But again, that seems really unappetizing now when your opponent's going to draw an extra seven. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we see a ink into a Smee from David here. A lot less of an impactful turn two than we thought we were going to see here since he's had all of his songs taken away from here. And it does look like we're going to get a challenge from Diablo onto the singing Cinderella. You definitely want to get that off the board. If he draws into a card that you can sing for three, for three, you want that out of there. Yeah, and card gosh, drawn what a for turn. Both, yeah, card drawn for both players here. It looks like both cards are going to come from David. So the last card we know in his hand is a whole new world, but another Smee and a Queen added for David here. Back over to Diego. Draws a card. Picked up a copy of the Muses. Diego still thinking about what he wants to do with his turn. Use that muse to add to the ink. Goes ahead and plays his cove. He's yeah. gonna move both of the characters to the cove, and I like this a lot in this matchup. Cove helping to make sure those removal spells don't do as much. A little harder to pick off some of the stuff. Some of the damage still already on these characters though might make it a little bit easier for David if you were to say top deck one of those. But let's take a look. Yeah, Hidden Cove, a great card. This is a card that has steadily gained in popularity throughout this meta. Um, you're seeing it pop up more and more, and more decks um, and being used to great effect here. Keeping that Ursula alive. It, do, it does look like maybe we're going to have a challenge onto the Cove from both of these. Yep, so the Cove's going to have five damage on it. You remove the Cove, you remove the Ursula. Very good point. So you're going to take a damage here because there are no captain cards in play. Back over to Diego. It looks like we're going to get that last card in hand, which we know is a whole new world. So David is playing off the top of his deck here for the rest of this game. No answer for the evasive Diablo, so we're going to be able to exert that. And unless David draws into a removal card, that Diablo is going to be drawing Diego extra cards every single turn. Yeah, it does look like he's going to go ahead and take care of that Smee just to make sure he, he can maybe keep that cove around a little bit extra, but I think the Queen's going to be able to take care of this. Looks like the Diablo is going to quest, like you said. It's going to get him an extra card here. Does Diego want to add a card to the ink here? Looks like it's going to be a note. Pass on over. So a card drawn for both players here and a one-drop Robin Hood. Not what David's wanting to see here. Mm. Looks like that's going to go ahead and be added to ink. It's going to go ahead and take care of the cove with the queen and pass on over. One character for each player over here. One of them uh, a little more impactful. <laughs> Slightly on the board better deck. than the yeah. other. Yeah. Looks like we got to have muses here for Diego. And that's going to be 
really, really good against David's deck. A lot of two power, a lot of two, uh, a lot of characters that can get bounced by the abuses here. Sir Hiss added to the Inkwell, quest over of Diablo, card draw for each. Rapunzel get to with healing. There's uh, nothing we can do with this here, right? I don't no, think so. It looks like looks like we're just gonna have to play the Rapunzel for no card draw here, and would have been you know would have been given the extra cards over to Diego as well. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a great card to have for its lore, but one thing to note is it does have one strength, and so if under the sea does become an option, and it also can be bounced by the muses, um, so not a great card in this scenario. Absolutely not. It does look like I was gonna say we're getting a second copy of the muses here. Di Diego can take his time. I believe here, and what's going to happen is the next time he plays a song, he's going to get both of David's characters back to his hand if, if Diego wants. So I'm going to go ahead and keep questing with the pesky bird. Then we're going to each player draw a card here. Uh, world's greatest criminal mind, not the card that David wants to see into the inkwell straight away. Yeah, David going to go ahead and quest for two off the Rapunzel here, pass back over to Diego. Diego has a song to sing here. He's going to be able to get both these characters from David yeah. if he wants. Sudden chill, nothing for David to discard. However, yeah. Oh, interesting. So we're going to talk about Bruno. Back to the hand that forces you to discard a card. There's only one option here. That is Rapunzel. Yeah. And then we can use the muses to bounce uh, the queen. To bounce the queen. So queen back to hand. What is left over for Diego here? It looks like he's thinking about playing something else. Or, nope, he's just going to go ahead and quest on up. But fully in control of the board here. And this is this kind of points out what you were talking about, that sometimes the Emerald deck here can be pretty far ahead, but it doesn't quest super well. No, it does not close super well. But when you have control of the board like this and you can control your opponent's hand, uh, you can take your time, as you said earlier. Yeah, we get double queen here from David. The one drop and the five drop. So some forward momentum for David here. Very good character into play for him. You can take care of one of those. Yeah, back over to David. Got a handful of cards here. Kind of yeah. hiding one or two of them from us. Yeah, so at this point, Diego is hoping to draw to one of his late game closers. You know, a Cricky with three lore would be nice. Um, there's some other options. Yeah, I, I would I would take anything with two lore and more here <laughs> yeah, at this right. point. If I was thinking, I want to get this game over with. When I'm when I'm this far ahead in the game, I'm always worried. I'm like, please don't draw the perfect card. Please don't draw the perfect card. So it looks like we're gonna go ahead and quest up to eight with Diablo. And do we have a song that we want to sing or no? It looks like it's gonna be a Prince John. And Prince John is a two lore character. Well, there we go. Okay. So that's that's one of the the few in this deck uh, that are not on the on the top end. Uh, not a card you usually like to quest with, because uh, you like to leave them there collecting lore, but it's a card that you can use to close uh, at the end. Goes ahead and inks up here. Does he want to follow this up with anything else? Maybe a song and bounce this queen back to David's hand. But no, it looks like just a pass. Doesn't want to open up to the other queen, getting a lot of stuff done. All right, uh, flute off the top for David. Not the best. But not, not helpful. I mean, the, the, unfortunately, the perfect card to draw here is A Whole New World, which would allow David to recharge his empty hand and sing it with the queen. But again, that Diablo means that you're giving all sorts of gas to Diego. Diego picked up another sudden chill here, another another card that doesn't have a target, but still would have been okay. All right, so we got Akita. Mm -hmm. Akita if you're Rage. David, you're just waiting to pick up all your cards here. Do, yep. you, do you have it? Any song will do here. So we're going to get a Paint the Roses Red. So, yeah, Paint the Roses Red is going to get sung by Diablo. It's going to draw a card. Uh, well, we drew Under the Sea. <laughs> there it is. So hold up. We might not. All right, so do you want to use the Muses? Yeah, it does. I think, I think yeah. we use the Muses and, and save it, perhaps. Mm -hmm. All right, so it looks like he's going to go ahead and Paint the Roses Red twice under the Queen and then pick it up with the Muses. Yes, and so... It, and then he's going to make him discard it with Sudden Chill. Yep. I like this play line. He's going to draw a card as well. So could have chose to make him bounce both, but we're... Yep. There we go. He's going to do it the, the long way. <laughs> the long, yes, absolutely. And, and David has had enough here at this point. So, yeah, just took his time. I like this. Look, Diego, you're in a position you're super far ahead. This is the finals of the tournament. Make sure you take your time, get it right. So what he did there was he made sure to bounce them one at a Game three. So here we have Diego um, is going to be on the dr play or on the draw again. So really challenging. I mean, anytime you have to come back from one game down, it, it, it takes such focus to lose the first game and realize you have to overcome two games. Not only, you know, you get one on the play and then one on the draw. Um, so Diego here fighting uphill. Um, David in a little bit more of a comfortable place. There's And one thing I'll point out, too, with the Steel Song deck, there is a, 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 an 
early game whole new world line available that is a lot more palatable when you're on the play, able to uh, force your opponent into dumping the hand that they've altered into on turn two. Um, so that's a line available to, to David here. Uh, it's not as palatable once your opponent has other turn two first. Um, so uh, just one, one other note for this matchup. Also, one less chance that they have Diablo in play <laughs> as well. That's true. <laughs> no, no draw 14s, please. <laughs> so a small altar here, two cards back from Diego. Let's see, yeah. This is this is how you like to see these finals. Game three. It all comes down to this. The, the, the young gun deck, the deck that's been creeping up in the meta. We saw it in Dallas twice uh, in the top 32, run by Jordan Sirio and Zach Bivens. And now here it is in the finals of Toronto versus the, the tried and true, the deck is old as time, Steel Song, and the fist bump to get things going. Love seeing the uh, sportsmanship from the players and the camaraderie here. And... It's, it's, it's a queen. We've got started off from David News. It's not a singer, but does have a shift line into the big queen. We saw how impactful that was in game one. We've seen it from both these players. If they're able to shift one of their really important characters the first two to three turns of the game, they can kind of run away with things. It's so, it just leads to such powerful, powerful starts. Oh, and not not an ideal opening. We'd have the Robin Hood shift available, but uh, the queen commanding presence doesn't have her shift target. We also don't have the Cinderella able to sing that uh, Let the Storm Rage On on turn two. Um, so... Not the ideal opening hand, but we do have a couple early options. We do have the Robin Hood. That'll open up the shift on turn three. Yep. Quest as well from David here. First one on the board, one to zero. So back over to Diego. Does he have the Diablo shift? It looks like he does. So he might be the first one to get a very impactful character into play. And then he's going to be able to follow this up with some stuff as well. Diablo shift and sing is available. You know, one of the things about being on the play, too, against a discard deck is um, you are one card behind. I think he, does he also have an, uh, an Ursula here to make sure he takes care of the removal spell as well? It looks like he does. He okay. He does, so he can do the same thing. We, if he has the extra song to discard it, it'll check. He can do the same thing he did before. He could discard the Sudden Chill, ship the Diablo, play the Bare Necessities, and pick another card just like he did Jeez. in game two. There it is. I think you can see a response here, the, the kind of reaction from David here, kind of like, yeah, oh my the, god, you've got it again. It's the yeah. same opening, and now we're down to two cards, and golly, we are, you know, just one or two more discards away from David having an empty hand again. Though if he wants here, so he draws a Lawrence. If he wants here, he does have Ariel available to him, which is going to kind of get some of those cards back. But it looks like he's going to opt for the Robin Hood and get the, the better uh, characters in play right away. He's going to yeah. go ahead and quest up three here to go to four total. He wants to get that five-cost Robin Hood on the board because in the off chance, Diego has enough in his hand to make him discard everything. If David draws into a whole new world or a grab your sword, he wants to be able to play that. Yeah, so this is the best of both worlds for him, right? Like, he gets to keep the best character and still something that costs five to be able to sing some of the more impactful spell uh, s uh, songs in his deck. Mm -hmm. So you might be like top-decking, but you feel a little bit better about top-decking with a five-cost than you do with nothing. Uh, Ariel on the side of Diego. Let's see if he gets a hit here. <laughs> You're it's tilted over here and trying to see it. I think that was a long came. I mean, sorry, we don't uh, talk about Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno. Th their version of a long came Zeus, sure. That's true. And along, uh, there's not a ton of, of targeted removal, but uh, we don't talk about Bruno is a, a great answer for that Robin Hood. So it looks like we're going to sing a grab your sword to your great top deck from David. going to take care of that Diablo and stop some of that card advantage possibly for Diego. Yep, able to sing it. Normally you sing it hard, so you're able to use your resources for something else, but nothing else to play here. I think we're just sitting on three ink there on David's side of the board. So it looks like a Prince John added here. Does he have, yeah, I was about to say, he's got the Bruno behind this. He's going to pick up. All right, so 50-50 chance of hitting this Robin Hood here. Let's see, we have a one and a two. Maybe get rid of card one. All right, so what they're doing here is they're telling you what numbers each each are, and then the dice is going to even, hit one randomly. Even an odd. It does look like the, the Robin Hood was taken away there, and then a draw for Diego here as well. Diego I mean, in a great spot. It's a bummer losing that Robin Hood, but you're not going to be able to play it anyway for another couple turns, so keeping that one Robin Hood he perhaps can play um, is actually not a terrible for David. Uh, still doesn't feel good, though. It looks like it's going to be passed over to David here with the Storm Rage on. Drawn off the top, that would be able to take care of Ariel, which is looks like what he's going to do. That's going to draw another card here. Stretch things right. out. And we drew an uninkable flute. So it looks like the Robin Hood's going to make it into the ink. The Queen's going to quest up to six, so six to zero, and starting to make some inroads on this board, but yeah. tons of cards left over for Diego. 
Yeah, we need. We really need to get to five ink here. Drawing that uninkable flute is is kind of a problem because we're we're likely going to discard it anyway. But if it managed to stick around to next turn, you'd love to. You really, really want to draw a whole new world, and you don't have enough ink to play it right now. So it does look like a Diablo's going to get played there, and then both of the characters are going to trade into the queen here. You're going to challenge in and trade off for that. So no big queen shifts available, but it does look like David's going to go ahead and play a character and a flute here and pass back over. Tons of cards left for for Diego, but. David's in a spot where I don't think he can afford to leave cards in his hand. No, everything he keeps in his hand uh, is it liable to be discarded during Diego's turn. Another Prince John. You can see why he was a little okay with trading with the Prince Johns earlier. Diablo uh, being exerted here means we're going to have a draw for both players here. And all oh, the five drop queen picked up for David here, but he can't get it into play because the earlier queen was taken out. So he's got to go ahead and put it in his ink for fear of losing it to any of the discard but from crucially, Diego. But crucially, that is five ink in his inkwell now. And so yep. if, do, if we do draw into a whole new world, that is available. Again, it does feel bad to have Diego draw seven cards off of it, but it's really um, David's way back into this game. Yeah, Prince John going to go ahead and quest because there's nothing on board that can challenge it well enough right now. So he's free to go ahead and get the two lore off that Diablo questing as well. How does Diego want to follow this up? I see another Diablo in his hand. But it looks like we're going to follow this up with just an Ursula. And then... Oh, no end then. Looks like nothing else is going to nope. be added to there. And again, the word World Creators Criminal Mind, not useful in this scenario. Straight into the Inkwell. Yeah, quest up to eight here by David Nunez. I believe Diego's quest uh, lore is a little bit higher. Looks like we haven't updated it on the, on the pad from them. It's the finals. They're a little focused. A little tunnel vision. So it looks like we had a quest here as well. Oh, no, I'm sorry. A challenge in uh, taking care of everything. Excuse me. Get rid of that singer. Yeah, get Get rid of the singer, make sure we get complete board control. Because I, I kind of like this from Diego, right? Like, you, you're okay with just trading for everything, getting rid of everything from David, because you just have so many cards, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, again, there, there are some lines back in this play. Leaving that singer there represents the ability to play a whole new world if you draw it, and then immediately sing a song, which it, it, you, you like that a lot less than David being able to play a whole new world and then do nothing. Absolutely. So it looks like just an Ursula is going to get played to put it in, in the play. It looks like one, dro one drop here. Robin Hood from David. I think... Diego might be closing in on a victory here. See a paint of the roses red under the sea, also in Diego's hand. Now go ahead and start questing up. I've lost count of his lore here at this point. I've also lost count of the number of cards he's gotten off that Diablo. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a, that's that's a that's a technical term in the business, by the way. <laughs> many many cards. <laughs> all all the cards. It does oh. look like that's going to be a concession from David, and, and you have your victor. Diego is going to be. Your Disney Lorcana champion here.